Yes? Yeah, it looks yeah. good. Okay. Well, hi, Miss Jen. Hello, Miss Simone. <laughs> How are you doing today? Great. How are you? I'm good. I want to, first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here um, to speak to, to me, speak to our audience today. Um, we've reached out to each other during these COVID times and um, I know that at first it was a bit of an adjustment for you, but you were able to overcome a lot of the struggles that you were having in the beginning with food and kids being around and isolation. And so we thought, hey, let's reach out to our audience and share some of the struggles that you had and how you can really help them. And um, we titled this the three slippery food slopes to avoid during this uncertain time. And there's no one better in our community. So for those of you who don't know Jen, she is such a gem. Jen the gem <laughs> is an old um, uh, school teacher. And I just said to her right now, like, I have so much respect for school teachers. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. But here she is, she's a, um, a huge part of our community. She's such a leader in our community and she shares, she's in the trenches with you guys and she shares how she overcomes struggles um, each and every single day. And I would love, Jen, to start off today with your story and just give people a quick recap of like where you started and where are you now? Yeah, so I came to Simone um, a year ago, November. Yeah. And I was at a point where I was eating um, mindlessly, high carb, high sugar, never felt full, um, no matter how much I worked out or how much I was running or how much output, it could never meet the input. And, um, and it, was, it was just really out of control. And my skin was terrible and my sleep was terrible and my moods were terrible. And it was just really awesome to find um, fuel for fat loss and it had a, an incredibly positive, um, uh, uh, my body responded really positively to the Fuel for Fat Loss program. And now it would very quickly, the weight just came up, came off really quickly because um, you taught us how to eat for nourishment, to eat balanced meals, to eat frequently enough, to eat enough calories um, and the right calories. And it has been so um, over that, the first six months I, I was able to lose, you know, 25 ish pounds um, and have, have kept it off. So we're like almost a year and a half and I, my energy is better than it's ever been. My health has been amazing. My skin, my sleep, my patience with my children, all of it has just been incredible. Huge. And so basically your day used to look like, um, you know, there was like muffins and treats and, and I relate cause I, I was the same and we have the same story. Yeah. Uh, right. And there was so much sugar in your day right now. If there's one thing that we can be eliminating from our diet, it's sugar sure. that yeah. is going to paralyze our immune system. And right now we need to boost it. And you know, here you are, um, in this place right, right now where you're not craving that sugar, you don't need it. Because you have, as, you, yeah. as you taught us, like, um, with the sugar is one is too much and a thousand is not enough because your, our bodies just, as soon as we get it back into our system, it's just, it's never enough sugar. Um, and we're just always looking for the next hit. Yes. Um, so and, the importance of getting it out all together. Totally. And in VIP, we have our treat days, um, and, and you still have your treats and you're fine. And, and you look at it in a different way, which I think is really powerful. It gives you this food freedom. So it's, it's really incredible to see that. What we want to talk to, uh, about today, first off, so those three slippery food slopes to avoid during these uncertain times. Uh, first, what I'd really love to hear from you is, is navigating baking with children. Yeah. So um, my, I have two sons, 13 and 11, and my older son is, uh, loves being in the kitchen and loves cooking. And he also loves sweet things. And so for the first two weeks of our isolation uh he was baking every single day and he and it was it, you know we didn't know how long this was going to go for so I was encouraging it and I was enjoying it and he would do baking challenges it was all really cute um and it was like cinnamon buns today chocolate brownies tomorrow chocolate chip cookies the next day and those all then needed to be eaten eaten of course <laughs> four of us of course and so, yeah and it was amazing how I was right back in, fully in there, like, oh, this is my fourth cinnamon bun today, but he baked them so they're sweet and it's good. And all of these things we have around making it ourselves. So what I was thinking, so then we shifted 
because I realized what it really was about is spending time together and having a goal, setting a goal, working through something together. Um, so the first big shift we did is I shifted him from making a baked sweet thing to making a roast chicken dinner. And like for him, in terms of life skill, like that's something pretty awesome to have at age 13. And we can all eat it and it matches the fuel for fat loss um, fundamentals around ah. the fats and the yeah. everything. It's just, it was awesome. And so then it was me shifting because at the bottom of it all, I was loving the baking because it was an excuse. It was a COVID excuse to get like yeah. all this sweet stuff in the house. So then I thought, okay, well, we really need to rethink it all together because he's not going to do a roast chicken every night. <laughs> And you know, there's nights where that's just him getting in there to make dinner. We don't have the time for it, or we don't have the, I don't have the patience to clean up after his messes. So um, it's just, we've been thinking about other ways. Like we, we are in Whistler, so it's, we don't have the ability to do this yet, but I've seen people like planting a garden, which uh, seems onerous, but it actually isn't that onerous. And I know Simone, you and, and Shelby have done on your Yeah, page. yeah. But in the grocery stores, they all have seeds. They all um, have seeds, yeah. So it's just something else that's like, you're working together, you're getting a goal, older, like 11, 12, 13 year olds can do it on their own. And it still um, has that great, like feeling of satisfaction of making something. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. You know what? That's so funny and timely that you talked about that because uh, we just bought those. So I really recommend starting seedlings. So get a little tray. Yeah. It could be an egg tray as well. Just put some um, soil in there and put the, the seeds in there. So not only um, are you going to have like a better chance of actually growing something, but also you're teaching kids about different herbs maybe. Herbs are a great detoxer. They're also going to cleanse your blood. You can add them to your meals for a ton of flavor. And I know you do that. I know you change yeah. like basically the, the entire meal just by changing the herbs. Sure. Right? So right now we can all be growing herbs. And then the other thing is like kale, lettuce, spinach. Those yeah. are your cruciferous green vegetables that kids, like we can teach them about these cruciferous vegetables that they can add to their salads, smoothies, right? Um, so I know that not all kids love leafy greens, but maybe they'll like them a little bit more if they know how they're grown and they have, they're involved in that process. It's a little well, and it's exciting. We are where we're doing remote learning and so you know, the curriculum from school and within the most curriculum, depending on your grade level, there's some sort of life science piece. Um, and so it's, it just fits. It's, it's, yes. it's cool and it's meaningful and it's fun and, you know, let, they can help you pick out. It doesn't have to be onerous. It doesn't have to be fields and acres of, it can just be a, a little planter, little planter box. box. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, the other thing is a hard puzzle can be a really good thing to do together I, you know that's something that Oscar loves to do it's again it's just working towards a goal because we really it's also about time together um and the baking um I, what I really want us to be careful about is the baking at its l top level it looks like something cool your kids doing or you're doing together but really ask yourself is it because we want the excuse of having sweet stuff back in the mm -hmm. house and going out and buying a box of Oreos is obvious that it's not going to serve you, but it's less obvious if you're baking it together and it still isn't going to serve you. Absolutely. So that's just, I just want us to all get kind of real on why we're baking and why your kids are baking. And if you do still want to make something with a sweet quality, consider just Google power balls. There's yeah. so many amazing yeah. bake. Um, versions that they, the kids still feel amazing because they're making something and they're going to fuel you instead yeah. of bring your body into that sugar yeah. dependence. And actually we have some that are going on our blog. So I okay. will, I'll, I'll, I'll put, I'll put a link in the comments below Great. Um, so that you can all do this together because I, I think it's that power balls are incredible. You can pack them with a ton of protein yeah. You can teach your kids about healthy protein, healthy fat, healthy yeah. carbs, right? Which, I, you know, if you can, anytime you can steer the conversation around, like, why are we eating this? And, yeah. and, like, this is a bit off topic, but I have to mention it really quick. The other day, we had a nightmare day in our house, like, nightmare day. And you know why it was such a nightmare? It was because Shelby skipped breakfast, and she basically didn't really eat anything the entire day. So her blood sugar levels were off. 
and she turned into a monster child, <laughs> you know? And so like, I used that opportunity to be like, Shelby, you know how you, you don't feel really good right now and you feel a bit off and you're not quite sure why? Well, your blood sugar level is a little low. It's like blood sugar level. She even repeated it after me. She's like, what does that mean? And so we use that as an opportunity to talk about healthy food and healthy eating and why we eat often. And kids need to eat often. And adding that sugar spike into their day is not a good option either. So blood sugar levels work in two ways. One, by skipping meals is bad, but also adding too much sugar to your day from that baking. For sure. And it's into our next... Um, yes, uh, treats. Yeah, so again, in the first few weeks, um, everyone's mood was low. There was lots of anxiety for, for, for all of our kids around, like, what's this going to look like? It was spring break, so it was like, yay, it's spring break, but it really didn't feel restful. Or, and so I set up these, the, these kind of daily scavenger hunt challenges on their bikes because we're in Whistler, so we had that luxury. And when they, do, when they would do the thing, they'd come home, and I would give them a bag of candy, like the treat, the, the, the reward was a bag of candy, candy. Mm -hmm. and I had this like sack full of sugary treats. I, I do that by the way, I've done that, I'm guilty. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, what we do, mommy, we just um, rode to the mailbox, what's our treat? I'm like, oh my God, I've created this total monster, right? So I have learned to shift into, um, well, first of all, it would be awesome if I just didn't give treats, but I somehow that's, you know, that's yeah. another story yeah uh, another day but um it's craft supplies it's um like pencil crayons cool, cool erasers um a movie night like yes hey, time time together night together tonight and it always surprises me that kids just want that time when i offer that to shelby she wants that more than the chocolate it's like are you kidding me that was really easy well, yeah, and then it's all the stuff that we spend our adult lives trying to undo the bad, the, yeah. bad, yes. the, the poor decision making around food. Because in our head, we have, you know, who I was when I first met you, Simone, was rewarding myself with donuts for like the smallest yeah, through the day. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if we can shift it into like that, like you say, time spent is amazing. And um, so I'm, I'm still learning. Um, obviously we all are. We all are. And and but don't don't forget, guys, that like you can always go back in time. Don't feel like because your kid is 13 that and you've been giving treats their whole life that now oh, I you know I just gotta continue because I've conditioned them. No, like we can stop this and we can shift. Yeah. Um, so amazing job that, that you do that. And by the way, I am guilty of giving it shall be treats, and I I have to remind myself that it's not the best way. Yeah, if it's, yeah, just something, yeah, we all have our, you know, different things that we know our kids look forward to, but you're right, time often, time together is often, mm -hmm. the, um, when they're younger, 15 year olds, maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <laughs> <Like> movie night. <laughs> <laughs> it's torture, mom, torture, why, why? <laughs> So Jen, tell me about comfort foods. Yeah. And what does this phrase mean to you um, now versus before feel for fat loss? Yeah. So that was the third thing that we, you know, we've been as a household trying to really examine, like, this is really stressful. This again, lots of anxiety. We're settling into knowing now all of us that this isn't, this is not going to end next week. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, I think we, we, as our family, and I wonder if many other, were drawn to lots of um, comforting foods like mashed potatoes and pasta and those um, high carb, high glycemic index, um, mm -hmm. fill you up, fill your belly, fill the gaping anxiety holes. And, um, and very quickly, I was reminded that that actually just led to back to poor sleep, back to um, feeling like just feeling uncomfortable. Um, and so what I really have, I keep going back to is our food, the comfort food needs to be nourishing. Mm -hmm. It needs to, um, be the highest nutrient value possible. It needs to be balanced. And then I am in comfort. I am comfortable. Yeah. I am sleeping well. I am, my moods are level. Um, my energy level is amazing. So I got to play around a bit again with how um, some of those old ways of the comfort food meals and realized quickly, no, this is not the comfort that I'm seeking. What I'm seeking is the things that Fuel for Fat Loss has give, have given me. And at the end of the day, right now, we need to be preserving our mental health. 
in every way possible. And our food um, and our mental health are correlated, right? And, and just like you said, you're going to have that poor sleep when you eat that high carb, high glycemic food with, with zero protein or zero nourishment, right? And uh, we should all know that that stress eating or that emotional eating is absolutely normal, especially now so many of us are dealing with strange times, it's unique times, and, and it's, it's going to cause that stress. And for a lot of us, um, going back to our childhood, when we had that comfort food, that's what that is, right? It's like going back in time, and you're craving that comfort that you had as a kid when you received that comfort food. Um, and also, it's not in your head. Things like chocolate, they do increase your feel-good hormones to make you feel good. So in the moment, you're like, I need to feel good because I'm so anxious and panicked and stressed. And that chocolate is going to give you that comfort. But just know that that is not the best way to be dealing with the stress. And that it's only going to leave you with that guilt, shame, and remorse. And uh, right back where you started, um, you know, and, and not moving forward and dealing with stress in, in a constructive, productive way. So, well, and it, it, it ultimately, this time that we're in can either be an excuse or an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And now that the more we're learning that this isn't, as I said earlier, like this is, this is around for a while, the more we make it an excuse, the less likely we are going to be putting our health as a priority yes. right and yeah. so you know I just thought of an example like for many people like a lasagna or that kind of um, dish is is really comforting and one of the menu items that you have in in fuel fat loss is like spaghetti squash with a beautiful lean veggie filled bolognese sauce yeah um, you know yeah beautiful flavors really out, but one is going to really nourish and the other is just going to be like weighing you down both physically and emotionally, right? That is fantastic. Oh my gosh, Jen. Um, I think we've spoken about some really good stuff today. If you guys have questions for Jen, questions for myself, one thing that Jen does um, with us, for those of you who don't know, she is a coach in VIP. And uh, once a month we do group coaching. So it's small group coaching together. And oh my gosh, like we break through some crazy barriers in these calls. Every single time I walk about that, I walk away from those calls, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you've changed some lives. Like what is crazy about Jen is that she's in the trenches with you, but like she sees things for what they are and she she's able to recognize and to turn things around and help you very, very quickly. So, I mean, you're taking your teaching skills, taking your life coaching skills, your mentorship skills, and putting it together in these calls. So I really appreciate having you. And I, just on behalf of everyone in VIP that's experienced those, you're amazing. So I just want to thank you so much. You're so welcome. And I just want for everyone to just remember that at the end of the day, you know, we want to feel good. We know the, the fundamentals through Simone and um, let's not allow this global crisis take us so far off that we're getting into a personal crisis at the same time and, an, and a health crisis let's let's hold on to what we can because there's so much that we can't control right now and and just yeah take hold of what we can control i think that's a great message to leave off on so thank you so much jen for being here today and sharing Bye pleasure and um for those of you who've tuned in or are catching the replay please let us know you watch this um so we can say hey to you and if you have any questions for jen oh my gosh she is a wealth of information this woman <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have a healthy day and a safe day okay. jen to you and your family and to everybody else watching thank you so much we will see you soon. bye bye everybody